Uh, Beers, jellies, you're welcome anywhere. What is up guys, the time for our big journey has arrived. We are traveling three and a half thousand kilometers to the finale of Driftmasters. And we're starting here at Dublin Port and the boys are in town. I want to mention that we have a new member to the Drift Games team. He's been working with us for years on the Driftmaster stuff and we've known you for what, 10 years maybe now? Yep. But Lucas, AKA Bandana Boy, is now a part What's of the up? Drift Games crew. And of course, to give him an easy first week, we're making him sit in a car edit for what, three and a half thousand kilometers. So we're ready to get on the boat. We're gonna to head to the UK first. We're gonna check out some really cool cars and cool garages. It's all gonna be a surprise for you guys over the next two weeks of what we get up to. Let's get in the car, let's get going. Thankfully, we're down. Lucas, we, we, we forgot Lucas. countries in the United Kingdom. Is that right? There is four countries in the United Kingdom. How's that four? There's four countries. Northern oh. Ireland, bollocks. <laughs> Josh, this is gonna be the worst geography lesson anyone's ever. People, you're gonna poison people's minds with this terrible. There's three countries in Great Britain. Yeah, there's three countries in Great Britain. Four in the United Kingdom. Northern Ireland, that was a swerve ball in there. No, Great Britain is Northern Ireland. So it's four. So I got it wrong either way. Yeah. To be fair, you didn't realise Holland and the Netherlands were the same place until Why we started. Why would you out me like that? Until we well, you know what? I, the trip. Right, I'm, I'm going to out Dave. We were supposed to be on an earlier ferry this morning. What happened, Dave? It's nothing to do with Holland and the Netherlands, I'll tell you that. <laughs> look, Slept it in. Look, Josh is not good at geography. <laughs> I'm not good at timekeeping. We're on a road trip that's totally based on geography and timekeeping. <laughs> You know what it's time for now? This is the most exciting time of the trip and I only hope that it's open because it looks pretty closed. Swizz around here, Lucas. That, my friend, is heaven. He, if, we, if I drove by this, he would have cried all the way through this trip. He has less passion for drift games than he has for this brand. This is who you should be working for. In there. Can I get a sausage and bean cheese bake? I have a bean, mate. Pretty dismal display. Josh, this is 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 me. It's car looking in the real world. Because you only see it in the shed, and you see it in the studios, and you go, it's nice, but it's surrounded by other nice cars. When it's just out and about, it looks great. I think we were pretty bold with how low we went. How stance we went for the trip. Yeah. Let's, I'm surprised. Let's, come, let's come back to that statement in about four days' time. Got some coffee, back on the road. Call a shotgun on the first day. So it is currently uh, 9 p.m. We've been on the road all day and we're stopping off with our good friends. We actually got an invite to stay with someone that we're big fans of. It's Martin Richards and Tessa Whittock who live on the route. So we're going to have a few beers, have a catch up, have a chat, and then in the morning, check out Martin's workshop, which has a lot of cool cars. So we have a good house guest. We bought beers. 
This and jellies. Beers, jellies, you're welcome anywhere. So it's day two of the journey. We stayed with Martin and Tess last night and uh, while we're here, he said we go to Martin's. Obviously he's a professional drifter and he works on JDM cars and all sorts of stuff. This is Rich's Racing. He's got a very special car in here, which is this R34 GTR. So we're gonna have a little chat with Martin. He's gonna tell us more about it. This is a very nice one. Yeah, this is a fresh import from Japan, built by Shell Engineering. We build lots of these really cool cars, so it's come over to the UK. My customers asked me to just check it over. It's come from a really reputable uh, importer, HA Imports. Uh, but yeah, we'll just check it over. So these yeah. are obviously getting really cheap now. So <laughs> really cheap, yeah. yeah just <laughs> pick them up in the auctions for like three, four grand. Yeah. Like They're just throwing them away. Um, especially in this kind of spec when everything's absolutely spotless and perfect and the chassis is immaculate. This is a, getting towards a quarter million of a Euro car now, which is ridiculous. And this one has a lot of spec, right? So it's got all of the, what I would say is Japanese tuning companies just thrown on there. This is H basically the full HKS catalog. So it's 2.8 stroke of kit, all the head done, HKS, the, the latest GT three turbos, even uh, the latest FCON, which you know, the FCON was a really old ECU, but it's got the latest one, which is obviously way more tunable. So they just walk in the HKS yeah. and just went, so, tick, yeah. tick, 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 throw it at the car. exhaust, the whole lot is practically HKS, so. It's a lovely color. Yeah. I haven't actually seen too many GTRs in this kind of dark gray. Yeah. You usually see a silver or whatever, but dark gray is very, very nice. Got all the, the right stuff, doesn't it? All the Not too over the top, you know. Sometimes people can go a little bit too far with them, and it kind of ruins it. But yeah, Z tune wings, the Z tune kit, just and just a simple color, simple interior. I suppose we've seen a couple in the USA, we've seen a couple in the Middle East, but I still think it's a big novelty to see one in Ireland and the UK because, yeah. especially when they're this mint and this spec, because we'll see. You'll see a stock one maybe, but yeah. so much, like you take a very expensive car. And I can only imagine how much was spent at HKS and all of that stuff because yeah. HKS aren't super cheap. Exactly. So that's an expensive, expensive car. And let's go to one that's little, probably a little bit less mint, Martin. <laughs> Just a little bit. Come on, it's halfway through the season now. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, it's very mint for how long it's been drifting. Yeah. So this is your 1.5 JZ R32. Last time we saw it was at the LZ that's World Tour in place. Ireland. Yeah. You've been doing a uh, competition in the UK all year with this. Yep. Yeah, I'm... Um Concentrating on doing a UK series at the moment, helping out with that championship and driving in it. So uh, drifting's in a bit of a weird place in the UK at the moment. So I'm all about trying to help it grow, keep it sustainable, and uh, yeah, competing in that and second in the championship at the moment because I missed one of the rounds to come to LC. <laughs> Blame, <laughs> blaming me now, blaming me. So this car, ha if I'm not mistaken, the longest running competition chassis in the history of drifting. We think so, yeah. All right, so 2000 and... 2005, it's been in the Driftworks camp, and I think straight away went into competition then. James, the co-owner of Driftworks, was driving it, it was his car. Then it went through various guises, various different drivers, always competing at the highest level. And then I took it on about five years ago now, and just kind of developed it, took it to the next level, almost made it Driftmasters spec, you know, with the sequential. Well, and, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, it won a Driftmasters Drift event. There's no more Driftmasters oh, yeah, spec yeah. than that. <laughs> yeah. So this car has, I mean, it's crazy to me because I remember this car when I first saw drifting, this was drifting. Yeah. And then the last event I was at, it was drifting. Yeah. And then like, that's incredible to think. It's gotta be a credit to the drivers who haven't totaled the car yeah. in, that's a long time now. And like, I, let us know in the comments, do you think there's a car out there that's been drifting? I mean, there's cars that exist yeah. that have been drifting back then, but this has been competing almost all the time since... Every year I think it's done an event, and uh, every year it just gets either a little tweak or a little upgrade, and I think that's a big thing in drifting, you know, if you're driving the same chassis or you're working in the same chassis, you know it, you don't need to go wild and build this, you know, try and change the world with, with one car. Just It's just little bits as we need it. Yeah, it's, it's actually a really, really good spec now and I love driving it. Yeah, and that, that's another big thing. Like, It looks great. Yeah, it right. still looks 90s, 2000s era. 
um, really cool wheels, still quite low, and it's just a simple vertex so kit, yeah. Really Obviously, we're now traveling around in our red and what we actually noticed that big jzx guys big now JZX guys we've been in it for a day you know what i can um, confidently say yeah this is a jzx 100 uh it's mark yes, two but it's a mark two and you cannot call it a chaser because mark two owners will go mad at it so well, at least i got the right number <laughs> that's a chaser that's a 100 chaser that's a 100 mark two can you tell the difference josh Absolutely not. Exactly. I can li I can literally <laughs> tell a 9100 and 110 now, sure. but I don't know if it's a chase, a crown, whatever the hell they are, I, I don't know. So, Mark IIs like this, which I used to have a GX100, which is the same shape, different headlights, they have a longer indicator there. That's one way of looking at it, Josh, longer indicator there. The funny thing about that, I always wonder, like, why did they make three different models of the yeah. same car? What was the, like, the market surely was the same price it was kind of the same thing. I don't know why they decided to make yeah, so many of them. But then I'm thinking now they make like an Audi, like an Audi A3, a Golf, and a something else, all under the same manufacturer. So and we were talking last night about the E46s and the, the faceless, pre facelift. Pre -facelift. Pre -facelift. My God, don't even. You know, everything's totally different. Saloon, coupe. You just kind of go, why, why did they make so many four door Toyotas at the one time? Yeah. It was almost like they went, let's show them five different cars, but really just selling the same car yeah. no matter what you look at. So. So we're heading down the road in a couple of minutes time. Martin is busy working, but we're gonna steal him for a minute because Josh wants to really go for a spin in this R34 GTR, Josh, don't you? That, that's what you wanted. You said it off camera. I wanna find the best R34 GTR. I've been in a few now, and this one looks like a special one. This one, probably worth a small house in Ireland, I would say, the same value. Same. So pretty large house, pretty to be large fair. house, to be fair. So you're gonna tell me, would you rather live in an R34 GTR or a large house in Ireland? What's the saying everyone says? Can't drive a house. <laughs> Can't drive ahead. It's true. It doesn't make sense, but it's true. Right, let's see if they live up to the hype, I guess. So how much were you saying these are worth? 150? Or the, yeah. sorry, this one would be worth I, I, I reckon so, I don't really know um, what they sell for, but yeah, they're all up in that region now, especially one that this is like brand new built. It's roughly 700 horsepower, 690 or something. 700? Yeah. This is like a, okay, I think this could be the most powerful one I've been in then. Is it? Say I was so, gonna say, say you've so. been in a GTR before, 34. See, what's your opinion on them? Because my opinion is, I'm not sure I mean, they live up to the but, hype of... Uh, I love the look of them, I think they're amazing. Are they worth that amount of money? Because, you know, they, they are a Nissan. You can get an R35 GTR that probably drives a little bit better, although they just don't have the same soul as this, so... I just, I just don't think the, the car market now for a lot of the JDM stuff is worth what it's worth. You know, like S15s at 30 grand. It's just a Nissan. It, it, it is just but, a Nissan. It's the same pretty much as a Lamborghini. Yeah. But it doesn't. No matter what, you're in a GTR. They are something special to drive. Everybody looks at them. You know, they they have the same kind of cult status as a Lamborghini or a supercar. You know, when you pull up to a meet or something, people awe over these. Don't I'd they? say more. I yeah. believe, especially it, especially the younger generation. You know, they'd rather see one of these and say a Huracan or, you know, an Aventador or something, you know. Okay, so 700 horsepower, here we go. Still quite sedate, isn't it? <laughs> you know, I wasn't actually <laughs> expecting that. That was, that was a lot faster than I thought. It's, I, I think the, the combination of the HKS stroker kit and this and the turbos, the power band is so linear. It's it's not like one of those big single turbos that just goes uh, bang, you know. It's just usable, and I think this is be a, a great car on the on the track, on the road, everything, you know. Same one that's almost there. The real world drive is more fun because it's a bit yeah, scary. Because it's, 
you know, you're not going as fast and everything like that. Yeah. And I usually think four wheel drive is a bit boring. I'm, I'm exactly the same, but being a drifter, you know, you're used to the, the car getting a little bit wild, especially on the road if you're just having a little bit of a spirited drive, it's twitching and doing all sorts of weird stuff. That's a different sensation, yeah. that's it. That's fast. That's really fast. <laughs> not take the splitter off today. Yeah, let's not do that. My God, that's a good adrenaline buzz actually, I think. It's nice. Well, maybe not for you as the driver, but for me as a passenger, I don't know what's going on. into this not liking GTRs and I think I've quickly been changed. I think this is a bit, when they're totally stuck they're like a bit oh, just needs more boost but this is so much better just because it, it's still got the twins so it's really responsive I think it's such a nice power band that you can drive it really well and it's actually it's probably quicker than a single turbo one you know because they're a bit laggy and RBs always feel a bit laggy but I think that the twins like this and the the stroker it just brings it alive it's a whole another another dimension really it's really nice Is this fashion? It is, gotta stay comfortable. <laughs> All right, so we had a little surprise today, which was a cool shoot with this R34 GTR. Thanks to Martin and Tess for putting us up last night. And uh, now we head on down the road to meet up with our good friend, Adam Ivel. But before we do, I wanna show you this brand new t-shirt on the driftgames.life shop. It is of my R32, it came out really, really nice. There's no, only a limited amount, so if you wanna grab one, grab one quick. All right, let's get on the road. Bump survive the driving. Oh, I have never seen this before, but this is gonna be wow. That is the most aggressive Evo 10 kit I've ever seen. Oh no, that is 